Meow, and welcome to Pathy Behind the Scenes. I'm currently starting to get ready for another recording session for Pathy Plays Morrowind, and I thought I will show you what I'm doing to prepare this. <coughs> One thing that I did before starting this recording, of course, was making sure, starting OBS, me, uh, selecting the correct things, you will see all that actually with the OBS instance that you see there, which is not the one that is recording this. So right now I have two OBS instances open and both will be recording. <coughs> but you, you will soon see what I mean. I can also real quick just move that one in. This is the OBS instance that is recording what you are currently seeing and listening to. What you are seeing there is, I just started a second instance and as you can see it is not set up for recording this is the settings that I use when I'm in a meeting, when I'm presenting something in the company so I can switch between the camera, the screen of my surf uh, Surface Pro, and my left and right screens, uh, some be right back things for when I'm having something for food. The That was actually like when we have a lunch break, I'm just going to leave the camera, the virtual camera on uh, when I fetch some coffee and this is like for before that. So. Um, but you can imagine if I stream while doing so, I would have the same, a similar thing, similar setup here in a second OBS instance, <clears throat> which would be streaming. And if I'm only recording, I only have one OBS instance running. So the first thing that I'm doing actually is starting OBS and selecting the profile, which is recording in 16 to 9, which is already selected. Then I select the scene collection, which has the same name. As you can see, I have a meetings one, I have one recording from the AV input, which is like when I record um, from a from a um, console. Um, this These are, if I stream 16 by 9, if I stream AV, um, I have a different background where there is no camera area because AV is 4 to 3. Um, and so the, the sizes are different. So I select recording 16 by 9. And as you can see here, now we have a nice feedback thing because here I can select where is the source of the uh, of the picture and I want local screen one which is the little screen um, the laptop built-in screen and as you can see <clears throat> there is currently my desktop let me real quick uh, another thing that I do is quit teams because um, I don't want to be bothered or quit any messaging services because I don't want to be bothered by messages check over here there is nothing running that could interfere with the game so once this is set up the next thing i'm going to look at is this area here does the audio work as you can see the microphone works to make sure that it's not too loud or too silent i usually snip in front of the microphone and see how loud it gets okay it gets barely into the red which is perfect when i talk i get into the yellow if this would be too high i would need to turn down the volume because if it goes over the zero, then we would have clipping and the sound would sound awful. If it's too low, I can always crank it up later. Or if it's if it's slightly in the red, I can also, also crank it down a little bit. Next thing is, does the desktop audio work? This is something I also did for this recording already, but I need to do it for this instance also. Is this hooked up correctly? Sometimes it does work correctly. What I simply do is I just adjust the volume and see the sound that it makes comes here is visible here, so this instance also so, so called hears the sound. So if I record, this will all work. What I don't know now is actually what I have forgotten for this recording, and I hope it will be correct. So let me real quick check this here. Um, it looks correctly. I hope the settings have not changed. If they haven't, then <clears throat> if they have, then I will need to do this. All of this again uh, yes it, it works so let me show you what I just did I go to the advanced audio properties check that the desktop audio is on track to the uh, the microphone um, and, and it's called Yoto microphone because that's the company that made the microphone and I might have multiples connected uh, all the microphones go to stream one all the desktop audio or, or game audio goes to track two and uh, and all of them go to track six because this is the one that will be streamed when I have streaming selected. The next thing to check is the settings in output recording that all two tracks will be recorded. 
This should be saved in the profile though. <clears throat> in the beginning, I either didn't have profiles in OBS or I didn't know that they existed. So I always made sure that these settings were correct because I had changed them on the fly. Now I have different profiles that I just select. So I just double check that I didn't accidentally change the wrong profile. So this is, this is the first things. If I stream, now would be the time to start a 15 minute timer. Um, and I have a little checklist, so um, maybe maybe even do a little 30 second recording to check that everything is okay. But now I don't need to fiddle with the settings on this machine because I know they work. Another thing is to fetch some drink. I have done this before I actually started the recording already. I have a glass of water here. I might need to fetch more during the stream. And then it's off to start the game, which is OpenMW, the launcher which does run on a different screen. I'm going to pull it over to this, to this one there, as you can see. So it does not get recorded in the actual recording uh, of, of the game, uh, although it will vanish anyway, but you can see now it's on the right screen. On the left screen is you. So I can switch, <coughs> I can switch to between the right and the middlemost screen. Anyway, I'm going to just start the game, which will start on the middle screen, which you still can see within the OBS instance, so I don't need to switch now. But even not switch at all. So just wait for the game to start, escape, wait for the main menu, and then I know I'm done. Escape, there is the main menu. Now, there is the Let's Play Safe game, which will be the first thing to load when I start. But before that, I have my... I don't need this anymore, for now. Because now I have some more preparations to do. Let me just start a File Explorer window and pull that into the screen that you'll see once it's open. It seems like it opened on the main... No, it did not. There it is. Let me just pull it in here. As you can see, I do have on my network attached storage, I do have a folder for video editing, and there is um, streaming tools, which I program myself, which is a client server application, blah, blah, blah. I will start the server. The reason, yes, this is because it's running from the network. And, uh, this is just a little console starting data loaded. And there we go. Content root path is the last entry visible here. So now I can minimize this. This is just, oh, that was one too far. Stream tools, client. And this is the thing that I use while streaming. So the overlays, the uh, to-do list overlay is still enabled in the OBS instance you're currently seeing. So as you can see, this is mainly my, this to-do list with the um, post-it notes. So there you can see there is some preparation things, for example, to repair the add overlay. I think I did prepare that. Let me just check. Mm, I'm pretty sure I did repair this. So it means that I have not yet um, published the version where it's repaired. So this cannot be marked as done. I just disabled the add overlay because that was the bug. When I, uh, when I make this empty, for some reason, the event doesn't get sent to the overlay. Uh, but this I did. The, I can now generate the chun uh, thumbnails with this little tool. And this I will show later because I will also show you the part of the video editing this normally is on the left screen, and I will also move it to the left screen later when I stop this, this behind the scenes recording and start the actual game. So here you can see the whole to-do list. This is the same order that would be shown with the, with the um, thumb, um, not thumbnails, um, those yellow sticky notes. So if I click on show to-do list, uh, now of course the to-do list overlay doesn't work. Just perfect. See, this is also something to test, actually. Does the overlay work? For some reason, it does not. So I now need to, now I'm going to do it differently.
see here I disable the to-do list and enable it because this will reload the web page. Basically it's just a web page with a transparent background. Now I click show to-do list and there it is. So it works if I use this. Now there it works and now I'm going to write something in here like just DAS. It's there and I'm going to remove the entries and it's gone. So the add overlay is fixed. So I can push done on this. So if you can see, as you see, this is a little thing here where I can just enter. Um, this is the thing that I still need to do. I want to have the one long video cut in 30 minute files for easier handling. Um, there is some secret things, some things that I know about Morrowind that I do want to do and stuff like that. But these are the ones that you can see. And the first one is Return to Skink. <laughs> and here you see it's uh, it's not a nice UI because I'm not a UI guy and I don't want to do with this. And I will show you. So this checklist thing is the is what it is supposed to be what is on paper. This is something that I need to do. Okay, let me know. Minimize this. Now it goes the same screen that you're on, so you won't see this. So this is one preparation that I need to do before starting to play. Yet another thing to do is to see where was I. So it does say return to skink on the top of the list, but I have no clue where we actually were. Excuse me, what we actually were about to do. So what I usually do in order to fix this is have a real fast look at my latest video, uploaded video. So I can I can even watch the latest uploaded video without it being published yet if I go to my YouTube studio. And this is my YouTube account. Uh, let me switch over to Kitty Place. So as you might know, my Lands of Lore Let's Play is still on my normal account. I never moved it over. And when I go to content, there you see everything that I did. It. And there we have mode 76. I don't want to normally view it because I don't want to view the view to count a little bit. It's certain that I might, but I can turn it on here. That was something I actually just wanted the sound and scroll to the end. just to see what we did. Okay, we are in some kind of ah now I remember it says return to skink and we're in some kind of thing. So the last thing that we did must have been um, arranging the meeting with the wise woman. So to confirm that let's just go save game see where we end up because I always load the save game before I start the recording. Oh no, there was... Ah, we killed a necromancer. Okay. Okay, we killed a necromancer for skin, for skin in three straight. And there you are. This is what I do to prepare for recording. And I'm done with this recording, cut it into episodes, and show you this, how oh, this works. So we'll see each other, well, you will see me anyway in, in a few seconds, but I see you, or I talk to you tomorrow. Now I'm going to stop this recording, start the actual, start this recording now. And as you can see, it says encoding overloaded because, of course, the recording is set in a way that it's uh, using lots of my um, GPU <coughs> for the encoding. So I think I have the highest quality. So I'm going to stop this recording and going to start the actual Let's Play recording. Okay, so I am back from recording, and uh, these are the files that I created. As you can see, there are three files. This is the first part of the behind the scenes video. The second part, obviously, I'm recording right now. This is the Morrowind recording that I did right afterwards. And as you can see, 
one day later I did another Morrowind recording instead of cutting it and I am cutting it as if you take a look at the clock I'm cutting it one day later because my roommate has the late shift so after work I am alone so let us start by preparing things this will um, this part will may contain a lot of cuts because I have will have lots of waiting time so first of all we're going to copy the source video onto this machine and there we go let's create a new folder call it mw put the files in here and this will take a while 28 minutes to be exact and I'm going to be back with you once this is finished and here we are the files have been downloaded now the next part is to split the files into uh, 30 minute bits this is I, I will show you later actually the details why but this is how I do it I split them into 30 minute parts and only work on one 30 minute part at a time and to do so because this should be part of the stream tools actually and I have not implemented that yet so to do so I'm going to use ffmpeg and as always I have googled the command that I need to do so so it is um, so this is a um, Ubuntu in the Windows subsystem for Linux which has access to this folder so if I go here show you have uh, lots of things and I have the videos folder as you can see there is the MW folder which contains all the files that are visible right uh, here and so I'm going to issue the command ffmpeg then minus i then the input file which is the uh, first Morrowind file I'm just typing a one letter or one number and then pressing tab to have the automatic completion then I want to copy all the streams without re-encoding anything I want to have 30 minutes segments reset timestamps 1 and then the output file name which would be the same as the input file name with a number and now I have to check that was percent and then I want to have three digits three digits so now it is running over the first file this is rather fast as you can see it processes with 120% uh, speed of the of the video so like um, in one second it has processed 120 seconds but it still takes some time there we go that was the first 30 minutes and I need to do this twice for the second file I'm only going to go through the actual recording second segment and the last one was super super small so now I can just go and say I know the second file I see the file name here is the day after so I just remove everything until, until here go to 10 and here I can also just replace the number with a 10 and now it will go to through the longer recording of Sunday and there we are it is finished processing I will process the behind the scenes videos later when I cut that stuff up okay so that was the thing where I need the Linux console now you see there are more files there's the original file without a number and then there's three files with numbers and for the Sunday there is also three files with numbers and the original file in theory I could delete the original files but if I messed something up I have them still so what I'm doing now is I'm opening the DaVinci Resolve video editing software and I've been using DaVinci Resolve for a, for a while I've been learning uh, more and more things about it 
and um, it is free, it is free to use. And um, I like that software so much that I actually went and bought a little piece of hardware, uh, which also was bundled with a license. So I now have the studio version. So if you, as you can see, I opened the Morrowind project. And as you can see, there is, mm, there is the um, episode from one month ago. And I can open this. <clears throat> or it actually, actually is open or this this is not the episode from a month ago this is the episode that should have aired a month ago so obviously this episode is going to air today so right when I'm done I'm going to upload it so this is episode 77 then I have the footage folder there is something in there I will need to check that later I don't know what this compound clip is but not what I do next is I simply grab the videos, those with the numbers, all of them, drag them into the footage. And since they're sorted by file name, now they are sorted in the order that I need them. And actually normally you do this in this view because you go from left to right. This is the media input view or media view and I added them. So the next thing that I'm doing is creating proxy clips because this is encoded and um, DaVinci Resolve will have to uh, decode it while I, if I turn the little jog wheel here, you will see that everything moves. You will see how the time goes. And since I'm moving rather fast, uh, turning rather fast, it'll be rather fast. I can also switch to a mode where I can go through the video very, very fast. And as, as you can see, it starts stuttering because uh, DaVinci Resolve needs to decode it on the fly and does this needs to do this in full resolution. So what I need to do is create a video file, which is called the proxy video, which is easy to decode and to work with for DaVinci Resolve for the preview. So what I'm going, and, and this takes a while. So what I'm doing is I could generate the proxy media for every single file. I had troubles when I selected all the files. So I need to do this for each and every file. And as you can see, this also takes a good amount of time. So I'm just going to do this for one file for a good reason. So see you when the proxy media is generated. And we are back and I'm going to show you why I only do work with 30 minute blocks. So I do have the video folders, which now, mm, no, it's not there. It is, I need to check. It's here, the proxy media. Uh, no, that's not it. Where do I put my proxy media? See, I'm, I'm usually don't just don't care about this. This is a project setting, not a project settings. Um, it is the proxy media. So it should be the proxy media. It should be here. Videos MW and this is the file. And this 30 minute file proxy media is 100 gigabytes. Whereas the original file, the uh, the input file, the one splitted file is three gigabytes. This is huge because it's, well, nearly uncompressed. Um, it does use a specific algor a compression algorithm, um, but it's, it's very, very uncompressed. So it can be decoded and encoded very, very smoothly, very fast. Um, so this, this is why I only use 30, uh, 30 minute increments. So now we have the proxy media connected there. It says the proxy media is there. And another thing that I do because I don't need the full resolution is I tell it to, where was that? Playback timeline proxy mode quarter resolution. So now this window does not have 1920 by 1080, but it has a quarter on, on, on each, a quarter of the width, a quarter of the height of the resolution, which also makes everything way faster. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to the <clears throat> to the edit mode. I am in my timeline. So this is there are two edit modes going in, in my timeline um, uh, where I want to put the new stuff in, like the new episode. And I'm just going to drag in the whole clip. So now, as you can see, this is this is rather uh, blurred because we only use quarter resolution. But scraping through it now works way smoother. Okay, so now what I'm looking for 
is if I go to the other edit mode, I see the two channels distinctly. And here you can see one of them is my chatter and the other one is the game sounds. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to check which one is which. I, assume, I always forget, I assume it's the first one is my chatter. Yeah, definitely. So if I do like this. And now I'm going to... Let's remove all of these things that we don't need for now. So what I'm looking for is times when I was actually being rather quiet. So as you can as you can see there is not that much and to make that easier visible I'm going to tell it to not select link clips so I can select this one instinctively and tell it to make me rather loud to set the loudest part of that clip of that audio to minus three decibel which is too loud I usually clip it down to minus five but we do that later now, as you can see, there is actually, it looks rather good, and the game goes down to minus 10. There we go. So. so I scroll through it to see, and I know if there is, to see from the content if there's boring stuff. And listen to myself, like if I make a pause, I can see it here, but sometimes sometimes it seems like um, I'm not seeing it properly. So I don't guess you can see, I don't really care. So this is interesting. I, I don't see this while I'm playing, so it's nice to see that the overlays work. And this is where the 30 minutes end. So since my episodes are normally 30 minutes, I now, I now can, since I did not need to cut anything, because uh, if I have boring parts, I just cut them away or I make a time lapse out of them. So since I didn't need to cut anything, I know that my episode is already about 30 minutes. So now I find a place where I can actually cut very easily. So now I switch over to the, to the, first of all, let's stay fast. Okay, I'm asking her for duties. I get a duty. I put this in. And now let's check if there is... Um, I'm not going to block myself in the mid mid sentence. As you can see, uh, the 30 minute mark was right in the middle of a sentence. Of course, we don't want that. So I need to find a better place where to cut. Sometimes I even cut a little bit out. For example, me doing the doing uh, these notes. Well, let me let me mark ask as you just yeah, I think I'm just going to cut before I. There goes. I'm just going to cut where you hear me sipping the the tea or sipping the water. So I zoom in so I can see it better. Mount can have been there before. Ah, no. Well, let me let me mark ask as you as done and add another thing yeah I'm going to cut here and to cut it I just press the split button on that neat keyboard nope that needs an undo I have forgotten to tell it to work on the whole thing again uh, undo there I need this button so all of them are selected again. I just disabled the audit, the selection feature for changing an individual audio volume. 
So now I'm splitting it, I'm splitting here, and now I can press, um, I can scroll here, press ripple delete, and there it's gone. And that was actually pretty easy because nothing, nothing much to do. Let's add a dissolve. Uh, that's that I need to do here. Let's add a dissolve at the end and go to the beginning. Yeah, I like, I like when things move, so I'm doing it like that and add a dissolve at the beginning. Wait a second. I need to first find where actually the beginning is. Meow, and that was that will be here. Like split here, delete, add the dissolve, and now of course the dissolve goes into me saying hello. So what I'm going to do is uh, trim start. And there we go. And just move it a little bit further so it first fades in and then I start talking. Let's have a look at this. Meow and well, great. And at the end. Mount Khan, have we been there before? Yeah, I'm going to do the exact same thing, just with the out. Uh, up. So as you can see, this where the red bar is now is my last piece of talking, and this is the silence where I start right. sipping water. There before. And that was that. That was episode 77. So now since I'm done, I'm not going to use, if, if I had left some left over, I would now duplicate the timeline, delete everything in front, leave the, the right part left over, and um, in the old timeline, delete the right part. So I just, so I have the leftovers in a new, at the beginning of a new timeline, and then drag in the second part. But now since I'm done with that, I can actually go here can I do unlink proxy media? Um, usually, usually I just yeah, unlink proxy media. Now it's no longer connected to the file. So now I can delete the file. And I can generate the proxy media for, because that was, as I said, only here for that, for, for using it in here. And now I can do so for all the others. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to show you how I continue from there. Good, so now this is done. If now, um, <clears throat> mixed all the footage that I have into different timelines as um, so these will be each of them will be a different video that I upload on, on YouTube and as you can see there is multiple episodes it's five of them the 77 we did together 78 as you can see does have two cuts so we need to work on them 79 also has two cuts Episode 80 has a time lapse that you can you can see by the music here. I already made the time lapse, so we just need um, just need to work on these two cuts here. And episode 81 only goes to the 16 minute mark. That's kind of the rest of the video. And if you take a look, I only need to keep the video number. Uh, this is actually number 002 and 003. So I only need to keep two, those two files and I can delete the other ones. This is also a reason, this is actually the main reason why I do the 30 minute things, because what I actually have done since I have prepared everything, I, uh, of course, I did do all the, um, all the proxy because I remember that on this PC, I actually have enough disk space, um, before when I deleted the proxies for, um, for things I wasn't working on, that was actually when I was um, when I had to cut on my laptop, which has limited disk space, but this machine has enough disk space so I could create all the proxies. The reason is I need to keep all of the source files for this uh, for this area here, so I can render the the video. Because if I render it, then I have lower quality, and if I copy that into a new project, of course the quality will degrade, or I fear that the quality might degrade with every rendering that I that I do on top of it. So that said, um, we're going to work on the cuts. The jump cuts are basically very simple. I have this um, this wipe swoosh sound effect and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this mode and now I can move frame by frame with the jog wheel. As you can see, this is one frame. It will step to this also. So what I do is I go 
I create a little <clears throat> transition. What's the transition button? So you see I'm not using it that often, or I haven't used it for a long time, so I need to find the buttons on the keyboard. So I hold the transition button. Now I can use the jog wheel to select one of the transitions. And I want to select the push. See, this is now this animation. Of course, this is way too long. So I'm going to shorten it by holding transition duration and then turning the jog wheel and shortening it to eight, eight frames. Now I go to the beginning, push the in button, which means if I now press the um, place on top button, the swoosh sound effect will be placed exactly where I had marked the in. And if we play it back, it will be this. Perfect. Now we do the same for the next cut. So I go here. I don't need to be exactly on the cut. It can be like here to insert the transition because it, auto it intelligently knows what I want. Now there it shows it is not. Ah, no, that, that's actually not a cup. This is where two video files connect, like two of three minute segments. This is why I marked it a, a, with a red blinking thing, telling me, nope, I can't make a transition here because there is nothing for me to work on, which means I can go to number 79 and go to this. But here you can see this is a jump cut. So you need to do this again. Select the push transition. I actually need to move this back and forth once so it works down dial the transition duration down to eight frames go to its beginning and it, it, it snaps to everything so I go to the beginning press the in button press uh, place on top and I have timed it I know that that a transition of it with the duration of eight is is perfect for a jump cut it's like like the sound effect lines up perfectly with the I could also use a transition of six that might let me try this here Oh, when I say perfectly, it's like, um, so I'm going to choose the transition to push, um, set the duration. Let's try it with six, six, go to its beginning, set the end point, place on top, play it back. That's actually a little bit better, but let's le let's keep it like that, like it is, and use six in the future. I should have some cheat sheet where I write that down at some point. Let's go to 80. There we have here. This is this is where I fetched a drink. So I'm going to do. Uh, I'm actually going to do the jump cut, even though the video doesn't change because I'm just in in pose mode. But still, for the effect that to show that time has passed. So again, setting the transition changing the duration to I'm going to keep it at six now since we figured out that this is even better place on top and I can just push the place on top button on the on the specific special DaVinci Resolve speed editor keyboard because I have selected the swoosh sound here so it will place on top whatever is selected here I could also kind of select things there uh, with the keyboard um, but this is um, it's it's a different way of selecting things and here again you see this is just the change of file here you, you can see um, here you can see that this is the you see the little time thing here which shows that this has been uh, uh, changed in its speed and you see the music and you can see this is the time lapse so this is where the time lapse ends of course I don't need to transition here but I do want to have a little uh, audio. Let me real quick find it. Ah, audio crossfade here to have the music fade out at the end. See that that's way better than without a crossfade. The beginning of the song. So the song ends abruptly. The beginning of the song actually is not as abrupt. And another thing that I need to do, of course, is to make a dissolve transition here a dissolve transition here so at the beginning and at the end we have this nice fade to black let me real quick check 79 this one definitely has one because transitions are marked here in white but it doesn't have one at the end so let's press dissolve here and at the same there is one at the beginning and at the end 
perfect and 77 also has the, we did that together beginning at the end so these are checks that i need to do now we have another thing so if you listen closely to the sound and welcome to Pampy Place. More you will hear noise in the background, so we're going to remove that. Actually, that's something that I normally do with the first, uh, with the first um, timeline, and then I, when I duplicate the timeline, the settings will be copied. I forgot this, so now I need to do this for every timeline. But who cares? So seventy-seven, and now we go to the audio editor the fairlight tab i could also do it in the editor because in in, in this editor um so i'm going to this is the first audio track with my voice and i'm going to find a place where i'm silent I'm the black panther. Okay, do. I'll be. ah oh i've, I've never I actually never used this jog wheel in this page this is time. this is nice because now it only plays the audio in the speed that I that I give it with a jog wheel, which sounds weirdly. So I'm I'm basically I'm uh, just trying to find kind of a moment of silence like here. Okay, so I'm going to do it uh, as I said, uh, most of the time do do it here. So I think that was come on. There was a ah. Uh, I remember. See, it's here in the effects. I can now say uh, all the effects, and there is the where is it? Noise reduction. I just drag it. I can either drag it onto here, or I can drag it onto the clip. Then it only applies to the clip. I want to apply it to everything. And now I set to manual. I click the learn button and playback silence, so it learns what the noise sounds like. That was it. And now I can just, now it stops learning. It should stop learning. Maybe they change it with an update, so I need to get this shade. And now I can play around with these two to get the noise down. And we had to leave lots of stuff here because we were overloaded, it seems. I haven't played for any and you see, you can hear now I'm listening only to what gets removed. There's a little bit of my voice, but there's also this hum. I'm going to only play back this. You see this this noise, which was in the background. Selling stuff, I guess. Which is now mostly gone. Perfect. And this is what we now need to do with all of them. 78. Find a piece of of silence this looks good doesn't need to be as long it uh, doesn't need to be that long it already has learned the noise I can actually leave it the 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 higher you can leave the level the less original sound will accidentally be cut off so that's this since this is all uniform this is all the same recording um, the same recording equipment basically the same setup the noise sounds the same all the time so this is easy and again here this is yep multiple I just look for multiple seconds of silence just to be sure but basically if you have just this this um, white noise yeah, you can even leave it like that if you have just the white noise um, then it's really easy for the filter to find it. And then we have the 80. Oh, there's a lot of silence here. Let's get there. Oh, yes, this is nice for noise reduction. Let's remove the noise. As you can see, it only scans the this channel for noise, so this channel doesn't get changed. This is why I press the solo button. And now listen to some something from myself. Uh, it seems that I can't. Yep, my voice is still normal, which means the noise does not cut off parts of my voice. There's also an auto speech mode, which I could activate. Actually, it, it would be perfect for this channel. Um, I always did it manually. I'm going to leave 81 as it is because it's not done yet. Now there's another thing that I need to do because I always set this to minus three, which is a bit too loud. 
what I do is I apply a limiter. So I apply the limiter and I tell the limiter to limit to minus five decibel. And that's actually it. So, uh, so um, because there's only a few little peaks, like when I, when I um, say something very loud, which actually go to minus three and I want to have minus five as maximum. So what I do is I make everything a little bit louder and then limit these, these little spikes of volume back to minus five. Another thing that you could do is just, just increase the volume here. You can increase the gain of the limiter, but um, it's, it's harder for me to do that. It's easier for me to just say, tell the system to normalize the audio levels to minus three. I could even do that if it's too silent. I could even do that. Um, you might want to leave it in the comments if the audio levels are too silent. I could even do that and reduce it to zero and then limit it to minus five. Um, let's see, and we're going backwards, so limiter. As you can see, I'm not the perfect, perfect user yet. There we go. But as I said, the software is free. All the features that I'm using now are in the free version. I have not yet used any of the um, of the pro versions. Uh, I think I think the linking here, the relinking of media, is that pro? I don't think so. It's mainly just the AI stuff. Like there is some AI um, AI video noise reduction, for example, that if you drag it in, it will tell you, hey, you now you need the pro version to use it. Um, but Honestly, I haven't used that at all. I just tried around and then then found out that I need um, that I need to have a um, somewhere here. Um, somewhere here, there is like one one of these these um, cleanup effects. I think it's these things, automatic dirt removal and stuff like that. These these use the AI. And thus, uh, I need the full version, which I now have. I, this is Resolve Studio, not DaVinci Resolve, which is the free version. Um, but as I said, I can I can just recommend it because it's free. It's very powerful. Um, it is free to use even for commercial projects, because the main idea is that you, when you get used to it, and you create a real studio, you will buy their equipment. And the speed editor keyboard is like three hundred something. The license itself also is three hundred something. As I said, I got it in a bundle from a vendor so i got both and uh, in, in the bundle of course it was rather cheap and i was like yeah you know what i'm i'm not going to build up a studio but i want to have something and i i really love to have this jog wheel i saw videos about it and um and i thought this might be a nice play thing and actually that's how i see it and so yes i poured some money into it but honestly people fly um rc planes and stuff like that rc helicopters they also pour uh, thousands and thousands of, of um, euros into their into their models because if they crash it costs like 1500 euros to get parts replaced uh, if, if expensive parts or it's, if it's an expensive model or, um, and if parts break so basically um, that's that so we have done the noise reaction we have done the um, uh, the volume adjustment we have done the um, come on it is late, as you can see on the clock. Um, my concentration is waning again. Um, the swoosh effects, right, for the jump cuts. Um, one more thing that I need to do, since this is this and this are the first episodes of a month, I need to do story time. So we're going to go right to the end. Go. And now I'm using the keyboard. I'm using Shift and um, the left and right arrow keys to jump one second to the right. And then I'm going to add in a storage. And as you can see, there is is no story time left. So I should record some. You know what? I'm actually going to skip that, render everything. I'm, I'm going to be mean. I'm going to skip that, render everything. And for if you, if you wonder where story time was, you and, and you watch this, yeah, now you know, because I do want to upload this episode 77 today, and I'm going to do the story time for next week, and I'm going to record some story times tomorrow. So all that's left to do is basically clear all, 
is to select this, select YouTube, give it a name. Usually I say and give it a name and add the date. And add it to the queue and I do this for everything and then I just press render all. Um, and then it takes a while. And then I upload it to YouTube. Another thing to do is to then just quickly go through the video again, find a nice name and, and text to enter. Um, and that's it. That's basically behind the scenes. 79. That's everything that goes, that's all the effort that goes into episodes of Morrowind. And as you can see, I usually have um, the recordings in a way, so I have multiple episodes in advance. And this is also why it's like one month between two recordings at the render queue. And now I just need to click outside of one of these. So this changes to render all and I can start rendering. And with this, I bid you farewell. See you on YouTube and I hope you enjoy the episodes. Bye.